So I was born the youngest of four children. In case you were wondering, I'm the cute one in the front. <laughs> cute, right? Thanks. And meet my parents, Doris and Stanley Zucker. Now, both of them have long since passed. I lost my mom when I was 28 to cancer and my dad a few years later to a heart attack. So one of the toughest things for me about losing them was that there were still so many things I wanted to talk to them about. So many questions I still wanted to ask them. But before I had the chance to hear all their stories, their lessons, their advice, they were gone. And I'm guessing many of you understand that feeling. But for me, it made me think about my own boys, Drew and Jack. Now they're adorable. <laughs> it made me wonder that if something happened to me and I wasn't here, would they have questions that I hadn't yet answered? Would they feel the same way that they had missed out on the stories, the lessons, and the advice? So a little bit more about me. I'm a lawyer. Please don't hold that against me. <laughs> As part of my job, I regularly see people preparing their last wills, listing their financial assets to be distributed to their family members when they're gone. But nowhere in those legal documents will you ever find a place where someone tells their stories, their lessons learned, their advice. Certainly nowhere in those legal documents will you find a place where someone expresses their love for their children or their hopes and their dreams for their family's future. So I learned about another kind of will. It's called an ethical will. An ethical will is a type of legacy writing, something you create to capture your personal thoughts with the intent to share them with the ones you love. Ethical wills and legacy writing help us to re be remembered, not just for what we did, but why we did it. Not just for what we achieved, but why we even tried. And certainly not just for what we said, but for how we felt. Now the beauty of ethical wills is that there's no required medium or format. There are no rules to ethical wills. They don't even have to be written. Some are done by audio recordings and others by video, taken even with a smartphone. And I wanna share a few examples with you. So first, let me introduce you to Lee. Lee lived in Atlanta with his wife and two young sons. When he was 38, Lee was diagnosed with cancer and he fought to stay alive. Over a year past the time the doctors gave him and during that year, he began to write letters to his children and I wanted to share one of them with you now. I'm writing to you now to let you know how much I love you both. Anytime that you want to feel that love, look at my picture. See the love in my eyes for you. Never forget that I'm always watching out for you, always looking over you. I am there for you. Speak to me whenever you need to, and I will always be there to listen, to understand, to feel your pain, to enjoy your pleasure. You are my blessings. What a beautiful letter. What a gift to his children. Another example. Betty, who at 91 wrote an entire book on the history of her family, and now at 93 shares that book with her family and talks to others and inspires others about writing their own books on their own family histories. This is from Betty's book. So I begin this treasury of memories. It brings me tears, laughter, confusion, and clarity as I write this. So as you read, please understand how much I have cared for these pages and hope they will come to life for you. None of us will be forgotten as long as there is someone who remembers to tell the stories. So Betty's a reminder that you're neither too young or too old to write your own ethical will. And next, there's Billy, a talented musician who wrote songs about love and heartbreak. He put his feelings about life into music. Before he died at 60, he wrote a song called Wasting the Countdown. And I want to share a little bit of that song with you now. Of what I feel that I want, what I want from you. Is it you find a little free time for doing things you want to do? 
Cause we all know someday we'll have to leave this world behind Oh, when your time does come it'll do no good to run And the answers you will find Oh, when your time does come I hope these things you've done and you of my beautiful song all of these examples remind me and hopefully you too and this is the tough part this is the reality check that none of us are going to be here forever and therefore unless we write it down or somehow save it in a tangible way all of those stories, those lessons learned, the advice will be lost. Legacy writing allows us to be remembered, to live on past our years. So for me, having learned about legacy writing and ethical wills, I decided to sit down and write my own. I sat down and started thinking about stories about my grandparents and my parents, like the story about my father, and he met my mother in the stairwell of an apartment building in Brooklyn after World War II. And then 10 days later, they got married. 10 days later. I love that story. I wrote stories about me growing up. I wrote stories about my wife, Melanie, and our life together. But what I really wanted to create in this document was something that if my boys or my grandchildren one day, hopefully, or great-grandchildren wanted to ask me something and I wasn't there to answer, that they would have something to turn to to get my answers. So I started writing about different topics like integrity, honesty, and courage, what it means to have a strong marriage, what it means to be a caretaker for someone with disabilities. Then I wrote about things that I love like music and the fact that I'm still stuck in the 70s. And I wrote about dogs. I love dogs. I love having deep conversations with my dogs because they're great listeners. <laughs> I wrote about things like the pursuit of happiness, the stress of life, the joy of parenthood, even with teenagers. And I came up with about 40 different topics and stories. And since I was 40 when I wrote it, I called my book 40 Things About Turning 40. And then when I turned 50, yes, I'm over 50, I added 10 more topics and stories and added that and made my book 50 Things About Turning 50. And then when I turn 60, I'll add 10 more. So this book is my version of an ethical will. And now the good part, it's your turn. Each one of you has a story to tell, a lesson to share, advice to give, and I know messages to convey. Maybe it's a story about your grandparents or parents. Maybe it's a story about something that happened to you when you were growing up or something that happened to you as an adult. We all know that we go through life with certain challenges and difficulties, but in fact, it's the honest recitation of those experiences which may provide the emotional support that our family and friends need when they go through their own life predicaments. It's your lessons of adversity and resiliency, of, of failure and success that may provide the advice and guidance to your children or grandchildren in the future. So what are your stories? What are your lessons learned? What's your advice? What will be your messages to your loved ones? What will be your ethical will? I can promise you this, if you go on this journey to creating your ethical will, it'll be one of the greatest gifts of love that you can give or that can ever be received. Thank you very much.